afternoon. I hope you have a uh, very good DrupalCon in Prague. This is my first DrupalCon talk here, and I'm really honored to be here. I'm going to talk about uh, things around how to localize user experience, especially the experience in the CJK language. We have many tools to help with the translations in Drupal, but understand how to localize the user experience can make the website even better. So later in the uh, presentation, I will address more about the CJK. I hope you won't uh, explore your mind. But if you don't know CJK yet, uh, let's embrace some cultural shock. And if you are uh, working on the, some kind of a website with CJK, I hope this will be also helpful. So I'm a Taiwanese Drupal uh, developer and made the website in traditional Chinese, Japanese, and English for the last years in my adventure in Drupal. I work in the Japanese Research Institute, OIST, uh, which is use uh, English and Japanese as equally important first language. Our team always make sure uh, the our ex uh, to bring the same experience to our audience with the same, uh, the same uh, experience in, in both English and Japanese. So o OIST is a public funded by uh, the Japanese government directly from the cabinet office. It is an interdisciplinary research institute. Uh, if you are interested in the, in the institute and want to more, learn more about our uh, project in, in with our new website, uh, you, I think we can watch the, the recording from the, the talk they gave by the Michael Cooper on uh, Tuesday. So uh, let's talk about the translation first. We all know Drupal has the well-developed uh, translation system that enables us to make the website uh, well-translated. We can translate the node with the field translation. We can translate many strings that appears in the UI. And most of the time, we, we just mark the tweak and or the PHP with the T function or filter. Sometimes we can also change the, uh, the dynamic variation in, in the T function as well. Sometimes we also need the, the context to, in, to be able to translate things into different uh, locales. For example, in Japanese, uh, we translate contact into two different words, uh, as an action or as a section label. So it's a different mean, meaning. So we need the, the context. That uh, the Drupal system helps us really well. And we know how to make the multi-language website on Drupal already. Is that enough? Of course, no. So that's why my topic is coming for these. And there was a Chinese uh, newspaper editor, translator, and writer in Qing Dynasty. He was the most fa uh, famous translator. He, he he's most famous for introducing the the Western idea, including the Darwin's natural selection to China in the late 19th century. He, had, uh, he addressed the three difficulties in the translation, xin, da, ya, these three characters. And that is the, the ideal model in translation and it influenced the translation a lot in the publication. An ideal translation to Chinese or Japanese that follows the three principles could make the lens or translation really, really different, sometimes shorter, sometimes much longer uh, from English or to English. So takes the just one word as the example translate. Uh, it could be different uh, length, but in Chinese and Japanese, you can see the first character is the same, but this, they are still a little bit different. And let's expand it to a little, and this is the Drupal UI sentence we all often see in the, in the login UI. So, but how much difference in the nuance and the length now? Although the feel is not in the English original, text, but we can see that in the Deutsch and also see that in Chinese and also Japanese at least. So different language ha needs different, uh, different way to express the idea. Some study uh, made rough estimation about how the text could be expanded or contract after the translation. So the best way is usually uh, to ac accommodate the situation is to translate the page and while you are doing the design. So in our new website design, uh, we try to select a couple uh, crucial important pages to do the translation at the very beginning. And we use the, the text into the design and see uh, the designer will, will view what's the, 
where should we break the line and how much text do, do we input into the, in, in, into the page. And sometimes the, the translator also help us to reduce in the text, uh, amount of the text into the, to, uh, in order to accommodate to the design. So the longer the original text it is, the more it needs more, uh, need more taken, be, need to be more taken care of. So for example, here there's more high density sections and the Japanese, we want to keep the same rhythm and uh, the same density, but actually the Japanese text characters are less than the English tech, uh, characters. All right, so the first challenge in, in our, uh, mostly uh, in, in my experience doing the Japanese website, one thing is the date. So when talking about the, the date, uh, we know there are translations for, uh, for weekdays, for months, but they are just translations. What else can affect the, the localization? Most of us know this Gregor, uh, Gregorian calendar. This is the most widely used calendar since 1582 by, uh, announced by uh, Pope Gregory uh, the Eighth. However, do we all interpret the, the date of the Gregorian calendar in the same way? If you see December, can you raise your hand? If you see December. Okay. so. I'm sure I'm in Europe, <laughs> right? Because Europe used to use the, the day and month and the year, but it's rare in the uh, uh, United States, right? And in our institute, we have members from all over the world, and we have to make sure we deliver the same message and we keep uh, all the user communicate in, on the same page. So in the end, we choose to use the ISO format which is uh, coincidentally the same order that we need in, in Japan. And also in Taiwan, we use the same format. But is that all for, for date? Not yet. I don't know what can you see from this calendar. Uh, you, we can see year, we can see weekdays, we can see March on the, on the top left. Uh, this is a, a Thai calendar. And, but why the year is uh, 500 years more? And this is just one page of a, a sample calendar uh, in, in Taiwan. And there are much more information in one day. We see uh, English day, we see the translation on the bottom right. Uh, we see 2023 and June on, on the on top right. And there is also lunar calendar. Uh, yeah, I heard some, some people see this 112. And this is the year we use in Taiwan. What's that? So there are actually different calendar year in the world, which is are still official. The lunar calendar is not official, but we use it for uh, many holidays as well. But in the official calendar, we use that for the uh, government document applications. So sometimes we need to display this kind of a date in the, in the website. And Japanese is, uh, most of them we can just calculate because uh, the, the Thailand that they use the year from it is called a Buddhist, year, a Buddhist era, the, the birth of the Buddhist. And in Taiwan, it is the first year of, uh, of Taiwan since uh, 1911. And Japanese, that's only like four, uh, four years ago. Now it's Lewa, uh, the fourth year. And what Jap Japanese, Japanese year can be more complicated. So this is a document I, that I, last week I just traveled in the uh, Spanish synagogue in, in Prague Old Town. And I found this very sad and complicated information on the very small permission. And, but actually this is a, a permission issued by the Japanese government during the war from the Chinese city in Shanghai. And the date, the validation date for this document is from Showa 18. Showa is still very common. Uh, it is the, the second previous imper uh, imperial year, which is still used in the official document right now. Uh, for example, my residence car in Japan. And our, many of the handbook in Japan, we also have the table. You can, you can find out which AD year it comp uh, equals which imperial year in Japan. 
So these, these three are still very common used in, in Japan. So how do we calculate these? How do we display them? It makes the, the calculation more conditional, right? But uh, how do we do? So do we write the switch case for the code? Or there is actually a smarter way to use the Unicode protocol CODR. Uh, the CODR, actually you just put the date in. And the CODR, uh, the common local data repository has a lot of information for calendar, for unit in different language. So it helps us to process, uh, for example, this date issue. I think that's very smart and I think that's fantastic. All right, next one about CJK. So there are some exclusive issues in CJK. And it's very easy to type lot in alphabet in, in computer with you, just keyboard. But how does it work when you type in CJK? So this is a autocomplete uh, search in our uh, new website. And this is a kind of a bad example. Uh, oops. So we, when we type Initially, for corona, that's uh, a co uh, corona equals to the COVID-19 words. And when we type, every time you see there, it pops different uh, autocomplete search suggestion, which is not necessary. And in the last, you, you can see we choose a different set of words when we do the search. All right? so input Chinese or uh, Japanese kanji consists of one to four different phonetic elements. Same pronunciation could have different words combinations. So the, the main issue here is the autocomplete triggers the search too early before the words has been chosen or the type is finished. So when type the word in the computer, the keystroke is also very different from, from different languages. When typing the, the CJK text, we would like to wait until the word is en finally entered. And this can be done using a, a special JavaScript event. But, uh, so if we implement it, we can see these. So uh, when we type in English, it works still the same. Every, every stroke uh, triggers the search. But when we type uh, Japanese, until the underscore bar uh, disappear, which means the, the type is ended, it will trigger, only trigger the, the search once. So the, the, the magic is actually the composition event. So we can, treat, uh, we can treat the start and the composition update as the, the typing process is still ongoing. And then at the end, when it's ended, we receive the composition end we can start doing the, the edge act call or whatever we want to do in, in this uh, program. Okay, the last part, but uh, would be a little bit complicated, but I promise this is not a uh, language class, okay. So in English, we sometimes sort with alphabets, usually uh, symbol number alphabets. And how does CJK do in a similar way? CJK, Japanese, uh, they, they all use different ways. So let me start it with the Japanese. In Japanese, the order of the, these, uh, the 50 sounds, goju on, is the main ordering system in Japan we will use. They uh, represent all the 52, actually 52 or three, have got yeah, 52 phonetic elements. And there are two sets. The left one is hiragana, the right one is katakana. And the katakana is usually used for uh, uh, translation words or sometimes we, uh, the, some newly invented terms. There are also Chinese characters in Japanese, but they, uh, in Japanese it's called kanji. In uh, Korean it's called uh, hanji, and then in in the other Mandarin, we call just uh, zi. Yeah. <laughs> I suddenly forgot what my language is. So. <laughs> well, uh, if we have the, a group of words in, in, in Japanese on the left side, so what's the ideal order looks like? So on the right 
on the right one is the same uh, same pool and it order with this order. So first, it usually started with the symbol numbers, alphabets in English. And then hiragana and then karagana. And then the final part is the kanji. But hiragana, karagana, we already see the table. So there, there's an order from, uh, from row and then the column. And what do we do with the kanji? So actually in Japanese, it, the, every single kanji also, you can spell that with the katakana or hiragana. If we use the sort, for example, in the JavaScript directly, we can only get the, the order from the index of Unicode, which is not, uh, doesn't sound anything for the Japanese people because they, they couldn't understand what the order I it is. So instead, uh, it's actually taking the first character and use their uh, pronunciation and order by the pronunciation. So starting with the first character, if the first character is the same, and then the second character will be compared. But uh, so this is using locale compare in the JavaScript to make this order. But you can see in the right in the center, uh, one hyphen two, that one. Uh, the others are in the incremental order, but this one is not because a Japanese character can have more than one pronunciation. So it was actually considered as the other pronunciation. All right, uh, different pronunciation, I will hold it a little bit and I jump to Chinese here. So this is the character that we use for uh, that's the Czech Republic name, the first character. And there are many different uh, ways we can attribute the one uh, we can attribute one uh, character. There are radical strokes, there are total strokes, and we can also spell the word with BPMF, that's the phonetic characters in, in, we use in Taiwan, or in, in, in China, they use pinyin. So there are three different for these characters, so the three different pronunciation. Represent music, happy, happiness, or to appreciate as a verb. In Japanese, there are more. So because they inherited a lot of uh, different uh, pronunciation o also from the, the ancient Chinese era. So they have much more. There are 580 uh, words, characters in, in Chinese has more than one pronunciation out of 5,000 common used characters. 600 Ch uh, Japanese kanji has more than one pronunciation out of uh, 2,000 common used Japanese characters. So how do we sort, sort them? So we, we already see we can use the lo lo local compare to make the, the order more clear. And it also applies to the other language like Ukraine or Farsi or Arabic uh, languages. So it also works, not perfect, but also works for Japanese. And in PHP, there's also a similar in, uh, international class, but I would like to recommend do not use PHP. Uh, you can use, just use the database query instead because the database will handle it better than the PHP. And I mentioned there are the other attribute that we can, uh, we can sort the Chinese character. So there's actually uh, strokes. We can specify the stroke from the CLDR uh, repository. And also we can use the other phonetic uh, attribute. So they all have different orders. So there are, so how do we, at the end, how do we uh, do with the character that has many, many pronunciations? Actually, there's no way, <laughs> no way. So, but the, the, the thing is, the issue only affects Japanese kanji order. And also if we order with the, the ping or the burpamufa in Taiwan with the phonetic uh, system, but the native speaker know the common variations of the pronunciations. So they already process in mind when they see the characters. So as long as they are in the, the same logic, it won't be a, a, a big trouble for them. But of course, if we do need a, a special order, uh, we can, we, we need to customize with the special uh, array or map 
to the uh, characters. All right, so I think I'm on time and just recap, we know what to consider beyond uh, internationalization and there are different kinds of system and what's the issue when we input the CJK and the sorting methods regarding different locales. There are some very good help uh, from uh, the JavaScript already. So if you are interested in the slide, it's already online. All right, thank you. Okay, so um, to go to the questions, so we already have a question online that was put in at the beginning, so let's start with that. So the Dennis Patzer uh, has, uh, we have a problem in Drupal using the T function, uh, for example, T parentheses name can mean last name in the case of a person or simply name in the case of a product. How can this problem in Drupal be solved? So I think it, it can be resolved by the, the, the context. So um, if you, if you r this is in the, in the PHP, so if you can give a, a, a context with the, the, the option, you will be able to write two different uh, translation in, in the PO file. Uh, there is an additional attribute you can, you can write the same context for the, for the translation text. Yes, so in, in, the, in the UI translation, you will also see here uh, there will be a small help text saying what the context it is. More questions? Yeah. Okay, so questions, anybody? We have very little time, but yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You did present um, on Tuesday some problems with the word wrapping. Mm. Is there anything in Drupal that helps to uh, break the words correctly when you go at the end of the line? There's nothing I know in, in Drupal, but uh, there are some, because it's mainly the front end. So. Uh, in in Taiwan, we we don't like to break line it, and then show the the symbol, the like punctuation in the first character. So there are some JavaScript tool to prevent that and try to break more words into the ne the next line. So maybe there are something similar in Japanese as well. Mm. Thank you, everyone. Uh, if you have questions for for Michael and Chris, just uh, step outside the door. We have another session starting in two minutes. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.